Hello everyone! Today we're taking a look at the Brook Sniper. It's an adapter for using your keyboard and mouse to play games on your Nintendo Switch, PS4 or Xbox console. It is also compatible with the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. In the box you get the sniper adapter, and here in the front you can plug in your mouse and keyboard. In the back you have two extra ports, one for headphones and other for plugging in your controller. I'll explain the controller port later. The cable is a mini USB cable and it has two USB ports, one for data and one for extra power. You also get a Brook gaming sticker. And here's the quick start guide. And that's all. You should update your Brook Sniper before using it. And to do that, hold the function key while plugging it in. The lights will turn purple, meaning that you enter update mode. Then on your computer, you can launch the Sniper Update app and push the start button. It's really important to update your Brook Sniper first, because it is not compatible with the Nintendo Switch out of the box. You will also get a lot of bug fixes and extra features that were added later. After updating, the front light of your Brook adapter will indicate which console mode it's working on. Green for Xbox, red for the Nintendo Switch, and blue for the PlayStation 4. It will auto-detect the PlayStation and Xbox, but it won't auto-detect the Nintendo Switch. To enter the Switch mode, you should hold the Bluetooth button first and then plug it to your console. Next, download the Brook Sniper app and use it to connect to the adapter. In the app, you can configure your own preset, choosing your name, color and a shortcut key to activate it. And by clicking on keyboard here, you can set all of the buttons that you want to the respective keyboard press. Notice here that you can also set scroll movements and side buttons if your mouse has those. Oh, and by the way, the color that you choose here will be shown in the side of the Brook Sniper, which is really useful to know which preset you're using. And there is also a super complete macro function. I'll show how it works later. When creating a new configuration, you can select some presets made by Brook Gaming themselves. And if you don't find any presets for the game you're playing, you can select the player shared presets and see their creations. If you want, you can also upload your own presets. If you have a Brook Sniper, the presets that I made in this review are already available under the MOBA tag. The app is very well organized, you can even set a custom icon for your presets. Let me show you now how to configure your own game to work with a keyboard and mouse. The first thing you'll want to do is go to the mouse tab and set the options like these. 
It's very important that you leave the DPI slider to the default setting. After you completed everything, you can slightly adjust it to the right or to the left. Then go to your game settings and set the sensitivity to the max. Again, after you completed all of the configurations, if the max setting is not working well for you, you can come back and adjust it. Then move the dead zone to the minimum level. And here's why it's important. You'll want to match the minimum dead zone here in the app to the minimum dead zone in the game you're using. Since each game have different dead zones, you should do this manually for each game you're playing. And here's the dead zone behavior in Splatoon 2. With the dead zone set to 1, my movements aren't picked up at all. But now I'll set the dead zone to 15, which is the minimum dead zone in this game. Now the smallest movements in the mouse are matched with the smallest movements in the game. If you set your dead zone too high, this is what will happen. I barely move the mouse and the camera jumps around. With a dead zone of 15, the movements are just perfect. Next is the HIP or hip slider. With it set to 20, my movements can't reach the edge at all. But let's set it to 100 and now my movements can easily reach the edge and there is even a buffer if you move too fast. And here's how the game responds to that setting. Here's a problem that I found with Splatoon 2. With the dead zone set to 15, my smallest movements are picked up horizontally, just fine, right? But notice what happens when I move my mouse upwards. The aim is not moving at all. This happens because the vertical dead zone is larger than the horizontal dead zone. So to fix this you have only one option, which is to set your dead zone to 20. You will lose a little bit of precision horizontally, but the aim will work better on the vertical axis too. After these configurations, the aiming should feel much better. Still not perfect as a PC game. As you can see here, the vertical and horizontal movements are just fine, but the diagonals feels a little bit choppy. The X and Y radio will adjust how easy it is to move horizontally or vertically. Setting it to 5 will help with the vertical axis problem that I've shown before. The ballistics here will help you when you want to turn around. With a 1 to 1 option, you will really need to move your mouse fast to reach the full speed. But if you set up a boost option, it will help you out by boosting your movement when you reach a certain threshold. On the preference tab, the shooting speed strengthen is a turbo option. The inverted Y axis works just fine, but the sniper breath and anti-recoil functions didn't work at all for me. I tried it all the best I could, but they didn't do anything. The same goes for the advanced mouse options. 
I think these options are for fine tuning, so they won't make a huge difference. Finally, with all settings completed, everything is looking great. You have access to your grenades and jumping on spacebar. You can even do a quick turnaround by pressing the side buttons in the mouse. You can turn to a squid with the right button and fire with the left button. Since the precision is not pixel perfect as PC games, it takes a while to get used to. But after a while you won't even see the difference. And with a mouse and keyboard, you can do movements that you couldn't with a gyro or an analog stick. For example, you can try doing a circle strafing with spot on precision. If you used an analog stick, you wouldn't get the same accuracy. And if you used a gyro, you would end up as a twisted body. Moving over to Ninjala, the adapter also works really well. Ninjala has an aim assist by default so you can just point and shoot with no worries. Ninjala is a mix of a fighting game with a MOBA, so camera control is really important here. On Ninjala, I set the scroll down to be the ninja to special and scroll up to be a break attack. If you want to use your ninjutsu in the middle of a combo, you will have to wait till the attack animation ends. So the correct way to do this in the combo, it's cancel your attack with a jump and then use your special. It's a little bit hard to do in the keyboard, but you can configure a macro to do the fast inputs. Here I set a space button press and 3 scroll downs, and I set a delay of 10 milliseconds between each input. And the shortcut for this macro is the Z button. So in the middle of a combo, just push the Z button and you do the special cancel. With the mouse, you can easily shoot gum in the middle of your combo. The turnaround speed is much better with the mouse, and you can also do a quick turnaround just like in Splatoon here. On Paladins though, it's the worst result that I had. The diagonal movements are just terrible. Even setting the dead zone up won't fix this. It moves fine with quick movements, but once you slow down and carefully try to aim a headshot, you'll be having a hard time. There is one function that is useful for this kind of game though. The ADS slider is like a secondary HIP slider, which will activate whenever you press the right button. For games that have a first person view mode, this will help a lot when trying to do precise shots. But here's the deal, in Paladins, only Victor has the first person view as a special ability for shooting. If you're playing with other character, you would end up wasting your ability. And another thing is that in this game, 
setting the sensitivity to the max will end up being worse than on the regular setting. Overall, I could play the game just fine, but I definitely felt the lack of precision. And this is one of the bad points for this kind of adapters. You never know which games it will work on. Some games you will get a good result, but on others it won't be totally functional. And here is where they could make it better. The mouse movements are tied to the right analog stick. But if somehow they could tie the mouse movements to the gyro sensor, then you would have a perfect one-to-one -one aim, just like on a PC game. That's because gyro sensors have unrestricted turnaround speed, and they don't have dead zones at all, so it will be simply perfect. Another useful case for this adapter is for playing fighting games, or platformers if you like it. You can also plug your controller to the back of the sniper to use it to navigate the menus. Or play a game using simultaneously the controller and the mouse. A headset can also be used as well. Let's finish the review with the teardown. To disassemble the sniper, all you have to do is lift the back here with a screwdriver. Then you can push it forward and disassemble the rest of the unit. Don't forget to remove this sticker here before opening. Here's how the front piece is connected. All of the soldering points in the board are well made, and the USB ports can be desoldered and replaced. They are the first point of failure due to the constant connections. This small board here seems flimsy, but the other part of the shell has a plastic support, which will hold it in place. The flat cables are glued in place, the connectors won't release that easily. And that's it! My final thoughts on the sniper adapter is that it does its job the best it can and its performance is mostly held back by the games, so depending on the game you'll want to play, this could be a hit or miss. I reached out for Brook Gaming with the idea for an update that will allow you to bind the mouse movements to the gyro sensors. They liked the idea and they confirmed that they are already working on a way to implement this feature on their new revision of the Brook Sniper. The Sniper 2, which will be also compatible with the PS5. A future update will add these features to the regular Sniper 2. When the update comes out, I'll make a follow-up video showing everything that was added. That's it for this review. If you like my content, feel free to show some support by subscribing, hitting the like button and sharing it with your friends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.